Hey guys, welcome into week number eight of Text from God. This is the last and final lesson of this series. Next week, we'll start a brand new series, which will be... You have to stay tuned. But for today, we're going to be talking about how we can get into God's family. And who's all part of your family? We're going to take a look at that today, but before we do all that, let's sing our song. Today. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Can you say it with me this time? Psalms 119.11 I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So have you ever gotten together for a family photo, maybe for Christmas or Easter? I bet if you showed me your family photo, there'd be all kinds of pe different people in your family photo. Maybe, uh, I don't know, there could be some more, could be bigger, some could be smaller, some could be full of people who look identical or very, very different. There are some families who have adoptions who can be very colorful at times. Well, I doubt there's a canvas big enough to be a part to print off a God family photo even if we're limited to the family members alive today there would be millions of us hundreds of nations some rich some very poor some go to big churches some go to small churches some have the freedom to express their faith openly some live in countries 
where it's illegal to own an own Bible. Can you imagine that? Living in a country where owning a Bible is illegal? You get arrested for that. Well, nevertheless, even in those countries, the family of God continues to grow. It's one for all and all for one in God's family. There's plenty of room for more. If you're ready to join God's family and give your life to Jesus, we'll have that opportunity to do that at the end of this video. But before we do all that, let's continue on with this lesson. Kimber, I need to talk to you. Hey Trish, what's up? So I keep getting texts from this strange number. He first tells me I-L-Y, the number four, then Eva. And I'm all, who are you? And he says he wants to be my bae. I'm like, why should I make you my bae? And he's all, T-M-O-T. -T. Trish, you're getting texts from God. This is so exciting. God? God's texting me? Yes, he started texting me and he totally changed my life. He did? I don't know, Kimber. I've done a lot of things God wouldn't like, you know? I mean, how can I ever make up for those things? A, B, Jesus already paid the price for your sins. Funny, that's the same thing he texted me when I asked. What else did he say? Just that he wants to talk. But then I tried calling. He didn't answer. Like, not even a voicemail. You can't call God, silly. You have to pray. Oh, I get it. Oh, Trish, I'm so excited for you. God wants you to follow him. Are you ready? I don't know, Kimber. Is following Jesus really worth it? TMA. It's totally worth it. TMA? What's TMA mean? Take my advice. Kimber? Trish? I can't believe it. There we go. Texting when we're only inches apart again. We're so addicted to these silly phones. Trish, I can't make a decision for you, but I can tell you following Jesus is a great choice. And no matter what you've done, he wants you to join his family. He does? What's it say? One, four, AA41. One for all and all for one? I'd say God wants you to join the family. Do I get to be the kooky ant? That's my goal in life, to be a kooky ant. Hey kids, welcome back. Mr. Chip here from New Creation Community Church. And we're still talking God texts. You know, the words from God. So we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 to 27 and we are talking about the body of Christ and here we go the human body has many parts but the many parts make up one whole body so it is with the body of Christ some of us are Jews some are Gentiles some are slaves and some are free but we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit and we all share same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one. If the foot says, I am not part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. 
the eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. So, let's think about that. So, you're part of a family, right? You have a mom and a dad, maybe your grandma and grandpa, a sister, a brother, a cousin, Maybe maybe you're in what we call a blended family where you have a stepmom or you have stepsisters or brothers. So that makes you a son or a daughter. And just like that, in church, when we're part of God's family, He just looks at us as a child of His, but we're all part of the family. It's not like we're separated out. We're just brothers and sisters. Now some may carry carry on and have different responsibilities. Some may have more responsibilities and some less. But we're all part of one family and God loves us just the way we are. So think about that this week. Think about being part of your family with mom or dad or, or whomever you're, you're with. Do you have brothers and sisters? You're important to that family just as God considers you important in his family. Well, back to you, Mr. Sean. Thank you, Mr. Chip. We appreciate you reading that Bible story for us today. So how does Paul describe the church? We are all a part of God's family and we're a part of the body of Christ. What are some unique parts of the body? Well, there's the pastors, there's mommies and daddies, there's custodians. There's all different kinds of parts of God's family, of the body of Christ. What are some unique roles people play at church? Well, there's pastors, there's teachers, there's Sunday school teachers, there's junior church teachers, there's nursery teachers, there are the worship leaders, and the custodians. Why? Do we need to find our role at church? Because we all need to find our place of where God wants us to be a part of the body. How do we become a part of the body of Christ so we can serve God together? There's a simple, simple prayer that you can pray today that will allow you to be a part of God's family to be a part of God's body so you can figure out what role you play in God's family. Let's pray. Let's give you that opportunity to pray that prayer and to ask Jesus to come into your heart so you can become a part of God's family right now. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for who you are. And Father, we pray right now for those who have never accepted Jesus as a personal savior and they want to accept Jesus right now and become a part of God's family, pray this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner. 
I know that you died for me. I know that you love me. Please come into my heart and be my savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for allowing me to come and be a part of your family. Please make my heart and make me anew from this day forward. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We rejoice with those who have come to know you as a personal Savior today. We rejoice with them. We celebrate with them. And we love you for them. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for calling them to be a part of you. To be a part of our family. To be a part of your family. We love you for that, Jesus. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, let's sing our last song. Jesus loves me, yes I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate you learning along with us today. Remember, next week we start a brand new series, and you'll have to come back next week to figure out what that series is called you prayed that prayer with us today, we'd love to know that you did that, make that decision today. Give us a call. The number's on the screen. We can come alongside you and pray alongside with you. Thank you for watching today. Remember, you are loved, you are important, and you matter so much to God. Have a great week. God bless. Jesus is the only way Say Jesus